power in the name of Jesus. His name is exalted, is high above all of the earth. The Bible says that there are two things that will remain forever. Um, the word of God, Jesus reminded us of that when he said, heaven and earth shall all pass away, but the word of God will remain forever. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 15, God says to Moses, he says, This is my name forever, forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is my name forever. God's name will never pass away. It's interesting when we think about God's name never passing away. You know, there's a lot of significance in a person's name. And through scripture, we find there were na people named their names for specific reasons. They had an identification of who they were and who they were to become. Um, God, of course, revealed his name to Moses when Moses was there in the desert. And God was speaking to Moses through the burning bush. And Moses asked a question of God. God, who shall I say has sent me uh, to Pharaoh? And God said to him, tell him, I am that I am, Yahweh, W-H-Y-H, -H, Yahweh. I am who I am. That's my name. I am. Um, as Moses had led the children of Israel out of captivity in Egypt and had taken them through the wilderness uh, for those long years, when, when God called Moses to the mount to give him the Ten Commandments, um, after Moses had seen God do all kinds of miraculous things, God had, uh, Moses had seen God part the Red Sea. God had seen, uh, excuse me, Moses had seen God destroy Pharaoh's army after they were pursuing him and the waters came back on him. Moses had witnessed God providing water from a rock. Moses had witnessed uh, God providing manna, food from heaven. That's after they had grumbled and complained uh, later when God sent them quail and they got sick and many died. Um, Moses has seen God do some miraculous things. I've been to the wilderness there in Israel where the children wandered. And it's amazing that their sandals didn't wear out for 40 years. I mean, God, God had done some miraculous things in Moses' sight. But Moses at that point when he was going up to the mountain with God, uh, he, he had one thing that he wanted to see. He wanted to see God's glory. He wanted to see the manifestation of his name and who he was. And sometimes we think of glory in, in the manner of, of awe-inspiring kind of things, you know, fog on the stage, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's interesting what God revealed to Moses when, when he had asked of God, God, show me your glory. In Exodus chapter 35, if you have your Bible, I turned there when he called Moses up to the mountain, Exodus chapter 30, am I 35 or 34? Exodus chapter 34. When he called Moses up to the mountain, he said, Moses, I'm going to show you my glory. It's interesting that uh, what, what Moses records here in Exodus chapter 34 is that God took Moses and he set him in the cleft of a rock and he shielded the full orb of God's glory as he would pass by Moses with his hand. Now, God didn't have a literal hand, but metaphorically, somehow God shielded that, that Moses only saw a glimpse of God's glory. And as he passes by Moses there on the mountain, he declares to Moses his glory, and his glory was contained in his name. My name, my name, Yahweh, Yahweh, he says in verse 6. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord. Same name he declared to him in the desert when he met him in the bush. Uh, the Lord, the Lord. My name, my name. A God. And then he begins to describe who he is. Remember I said that the names were very significant in Scripture because it revealed the person. Well, God, in God's name, it reveals his nature and character. His very being and who he is. And God describes himself, expresses himself in his glory through his name to Moses when he says, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, 
for thousands. I'm keeping steadfast love for them, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but will be by no means clear the guilty, but by no means visiting the iniquities of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So here God reveals his name. God reveals to Moses who he is and his character and nature. This phrasing is found throughout all of Scripture when, when the psalmist especially cries out to declare whose God's name is. God is a merciful God. God is a gracious God. God is slow to anger. Aren't you glad that God's slow to anger? I'm glad that God's slow to anger. I know some people that are quick to anger. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't like being around those people um, because they're so quick to anger. But God is slow to anger. I'm thankful that God's slow to anger. Would we pray that God would conform us to his likeness, that, that we would be slow to anger as well? He says, and I'm abounding in steadfast love. Steadfast love, meaning that it is always constant. It never changes. It never wavers. God's love towards us is steadfast and it's solid. And then he's abounding not only in steadfast love, but his faithfulness. Uh, he who is faithful will remain faithful. God will never, ever waver in his faithfulness. He always will be and has been consistently faithful, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. That's forgiving that nature of iniquity that we have when we've come to Christ. That's He's forgiving of transgressions. When we know that we're not supposed to do something and we do it, God will extend his grace or forgive it. Now, that's not an excuse to sin, but all of us have intentionally sinned, either willfully to do something we're not supposed to do or not to do something we know we're supposed to do. And he forgives sin. Aren't you glad that God is a gracious and forgiving God? Then he goes on to say there here, but who will be by no means clear the guilty. In other words, he, he won't just write off sin, but there's a provision of sin covering that he's made for us. It wasn't through the law. The law showed that, that there's no way that we could attain the forgiveness and righteousness of God by trying to keep the law. But it was through the promise of his son, Jesus. You see, the law was to cause the children of Israel to look forward to something. And in Leviticus, when we find all the rituals and the bloodshedding and all of that that they did in the temple, it was a foreshadow of what was to come that the precious blood of Jesus would forgive us of our sins if we place our trust in him and the forgiveness of our sin. Be thankful today as we reflect on Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. There's power in the name of the Lord, not as a trinket to wear around, but when we call on God, we are calling on one who is all-powerful by all means. He's sovereign. He is God. And by faith, when we call on God, he will be faithful to answer us. I pray that the Lord would encourage you today in the name of the Lord um, to, to uh, all of those in the body who are going through different things. We pray this morning that God would, would meet you in the midst of that, that he would show himself faithful, that you'd have the eyes to see. You know, every day I remind us that we pray that God would give us an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. Quick story, I don't know if I shared this with you or not. I think I did, but I'll share it again. It was Monday, Butch had gone to the hospital as a chaplain, and uh, there was a lady there that had, uh, had suffered abuse from her husband. And she had the question in her mind, what would have happened to me had God uh, or had I been killed by my husband? Where would my eternal destiny be? And when she asked Butch that question, Butch had the opportunity to lead her to Christ there in the hospital. Uh, we never know what God is working in somebody's life as we come across their path, but we know that God's always working. Let's be intentional to pray and ask God, God, make me aware of circumstances in people's lives that God, I might be able to share the gospel with them. Um, God, if the gospel's already been shared with them, seeds have been planted in the heart, ask God to use you today to help cultivate that seed in somebody's heart. Um, 
And if God, by his grace, would allow us to participate in watching him save somebody, pray and ask God for that. I pray that God would do that uh, for me in my life today, that God, God would use me to plant a seed, that God would use me to cultivate a seed, and that God would use me um, in seeing someone come to know Christ as he saves them. You make that your prayer today, too. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. I look forward to being with you on Sunday morning, either in person or online through one of our platforms. This Sunday, um, we're going to share again the mission of First Conyers. Uh, I believe we're coming out of this COVID season, and God is really impressed in my heart that people are really searching for answers. And we want to be here as a local church that can provide those answers to them, that the only answer, the only answer in life is Jesus. Um, by him they're saved, by him they're kept, and people are desiring to know that peace. So ask God to make you available. I pray the Lord's blessings on you and keep you. I'll see you on the Daily Devotion on next Monday. Have a blessed day.